Living in a self-centered world, everything we are taught in the world in which we live, that it's all about us. You don't wake up thinking about anyone else. You wake up thinking about yourself. Every decision you make, you have yourself in mind. Then you, after considering after a while, you start thinking about your responsibilities and people who are dependent upon you to do things the right way. But initially, everything is about us. That is contrary to the way that God intended for things to be. That is opposite. That is anti-God. Because God cannot get accomplished in the earth what he intends on getting accomplished in the earth with me thinking about me, myself, and I. The planet is really in distress because everything, everything everyone does, they do it to try to make sure that they are good. Not understanding that we're really destroying the very essence of life because we're not living life for others, we're living life ourselves so in this moment I just want us to take some time to think about how self-driven and self-centered and self-serving think about it. make it personal it's okay I know it's gonna hurt because we don't like to look at ourselves in the mirror in a real way but just think about it just let God show you areas in your life where he's asking you to be more selfless where he's asking you to be more sacrificial where he's asking you to give yourself away for the good of others just for a moment just think about it i'm gonna pray and after i pray we'll move forward in the word of god but i just want us to take some time to think we live and we move so fast that we just don't have time to think about real things so that we can address life in a real way so that one day somehow some way we can find ourselves on the side of a real God doing all that he would have us to do to please him so just for a moment think father I pray now in the name of your son the Lord Jesus that you guide and you direct our hearts in this moment to think more about who you are and what it is that you called us to do instead of thinking about the things that the world has given to us. And we have made it a part of our mindset. We've made it a part of our way of living. We've made it a part of our, our principles. And these things separate us and take us so far away from who you are. So in this moment, I pray that you make us aware of how selfish and self-centered we can be so that we can really be used by you to bring great glory to your name. In other words, we can be used by you to please you and to please you alone. I know that sounds weird because <laughs> we haven't been taught to think about what it means to please God. We've been taught <laughs> what it means to please ourselves. Even in our attempt to please others, there's a hidden agenda behind it. <laughs> we do it so that we can come up. We do it so that we could get ahead. It's really, in all honesty, nothing more than just a hustle. It's deception at its highest level. So, Father, I pray that you bring us to a place of honesty where we don't live deceived, thinking that it's really about us being friendly, being helpful, being loving, when it's really about us trying to get what it is that we want out of life and out of others. So Father, we pray now in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that even as the word of God is preached, that our hearts are turned towards you. 
and that we live life to bring glory to your holy name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, we glorify you, and we thank you. Thank God, and amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like to thank you. Thank all of you guys for coming out this morning to worship God with us, to glorify the name of the Lord with us. Welcome to Mission World Church, literally where our intent is to live on mission together. What does that mean? We want to help you live life for God. When we talk about cultivating the human experience, <laughs> we really mean to help you experience life according to God's intent, according to God's will, plan, and purposes, and not live life thinking that you're doing life well, and in all honesty, you're being deceived because you're living life according to the plan of the evil one. See, before I get started, I, I, want, you, I want you guys to understand something. Because... If we don't have this foundational understanding, we will think that we are accomplishing something that we're really not accomplishing. And I'm gonna give you guys this foundational understanding. From the time a baby comes out of his or her mother's womb, that child comes into the earth deceived. So in this moment, I want you to think about your earth day or the day that you was born here on planet earth, whatever your birthday may be. And I want you to think about you coming into this world The day that you came into this world, you came into this world as a living person that will be taught everything that you will do during your time in earth. You will be taught so when you look at your life, you have to ask yourself the question, and the question that you have to ask yourself is relative to what it is that we're going to be talking about today. You have to ask yourself a very real question. My wife would tell anybody, I am real big on looking at reality. If I do nothing else, I spend a whole lot of time reflecting. I spend a whole lot of time thinking. My mind is really a playground for philosophy. Because I spend a whole lot of time looking at life. And so I want you guys to join with me today as I think about some things and I'll just share with you out loudly my thoughts. I want to look at myself in the mirror, examine my life, and ask myself a question, the same question that I want you to ask yourself. What have I learned? And what have I been taught? Uh, let's 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 say it like this, because I really want you to grip. I want you to grab hold to it. What I have learned as I answer my question. Is what I have been taught. And how do I know that I have learned what I have been taught? 
How do I know that? Because I'm living it. And after I ask myself that question, what have I learned? What, what have I been taught? Uh, after, I, after I come to the conclusion and answer the question, well, I have been taught the thing that I have learned, and I know I have been taught it because I'm living it. Now I ask myself another question that is real to me. How is the things that I have learned affecting my life for the good and for the bad? So I have to look at myself and ask myself a real question. Am I living the right life? So I was talking to a friend of mine, and 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 I had I had a, a very adverse uh, uh, life background history is kind of crazy, and he was talking to me because he and I have a similar lifestyle background, and he doesn't live the way that I live. He's ten years older than I am, and it's, he's he's my OG, and and we was talking, and he was sharing with me a story what just happened in the in the neighborhood because I go back to the neighborhood every once in a while. He was sharing with me a story. Unfortunately someone passed. He went to check on the people that live in the hood to make sure it wasn't a specific lady. And the lady that he went to check on is addicted to drugs. Um we call her a dope fiend. And he went to check on to make sure that she wasn't the one that, that got hit by a car, and as he's talking and trying to figure out is she still alive, the people that she rolled with were saying they didn't know. Well, long story short, found out that she was still alive, but this is how it was communicated. It was communicated in this way. Man, she's still alive. She ain't die. And it was it was almost as if though they was hoping, but this the hood. They was hoping that she that she died. And and we're talking, and I said to him, I said, man, it's it's funny. I said, because people really don't understand how wild and how out there you can be when you are addicted to drugs. And 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 I shared with him, I said. It, there's two things, and most people will be surprised to know this. Uh, there's two things from looking, and I want you guys to hear what I'm saying, from looking at the world in which I lived, and it's not it's not special. It's not special. You just I just made I just made an intelligent decision, but there was a lot of unintelligent decisions I made. This these two decisions I made just so happened to show up. Because I was learning some things as I was living around who I was living around. And as they was teaching me what they was teaching me, I made a decision that there was two things that I wasn't going to ever do. Because I didn't like what happened as I observed how they was living. So I made a decision that I would never smoke crack cocaine. Not ever. Not, not ever, because I've, I've, I've lived some nightmares. I've seen some horrible things. I've seen some people do some most disgusting, detestable. Now, you got to understand, um, um, we're not in the woodlands. We're not in River Oaks. We're in the good part of Cypress, Katy area. But you have to understand, do know this. Your shepherd is an African-American male that, have an, that had an African-American experience. We can't always be cute. We got to sometimes be real. Now, I probably wouldn't preach this if, if, if Jeff Wells at Woods Edge was to ask me to come and preach. Because they would be looking at me like, how long were you going? If Seven Mile Road was asking me to preach up in the Heights, they'd probably be looking at me, how long? You, you, the pastor probably be getting uncomfortable looking at me like, now, don't go too far. You don't want to discourage my people. My people might be a little afraid after 
But here we could talk about it. Amen? Amen. We could talk about it. Uh, uh, I've seen some gross things. I've seen people do some horrible things chasing and high. I've seen it with my eyes. Sad to say I've been a part of demanding that people do some deplorable things if they want to get something from me and you don't have no money. It's a thrill. The things that you make people do for the sake of your personal entertainment. And I, I, I've seen, now, now don't get offended. I need y'all to be with me now. Don't get offended. The second thing I said that I would never do, I would never drink alcohol. Now, now, if you don't have my past, you may not know why I had such a conviction, but I've seen some people do some crazy things that were addicted to alcohol. I've, I've seen some hard, so I said I would never, so you would be surprised that in the lifestyle that I lived, I only drunk alcohol once and I was tricked because they told me it was juice. It's when Snoop Dogg came out with the song, him and Dr. Dre, Gin and Juice. And I was in the club, you know, doing my doggy. I was chilling. <laughs> I just so happened to, you know, I, I won. Uh, a picture of gin and juice for the whole night. You know, I could just keep going to the bar. I didn't hear the gin part. My man was like, bro, it's just, it's just juice. Go get that for us. We're going to drink all night. And I was like, I could drink some juice. I'm good with that. Now, 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 third reason, I couldn't get high and I couldn't get drunk because I was a dope boy. And I had enemies, so I needed to stay sober. So I definitely wasn't going to be in the club drunk and high. I'm, I'm talking about what you taught, what you taught. Now, you may have, you, you probably wasn't taught what I was taught, but you was taught some things and some things that you learned, and they showing up in your life right now. And it's, it, it keeps you from being able to be useful to God because it shows up in your life. Because you were taught. You was taught. And so I'm drinking. The next thing you know, I went to hear one of my dance moves. And I thought the spin. And when I spun, I did like this right here. When I came through, and I was like, hey, y'all, what's going on? And they was like, you've been sipping. Y'all been sipping juice. They said, boy, gin is in the juice. Immediately. I looked at my man. I said, I got to get out of here. I got to leave because I'm drunk and I got haters in the building. If they decide to go off right now, I'm done. Now, now, now watch this. Ask yourself the question. What have I learned? Because the way that I'm living in the way that I think is a consequence of what I have been taught. God wants to teach you something different. Romans 12. Romans 12. I urge you, therefore, brothers, sisters, because of God's mercies, I encourage you to present your bodies as living sacrifices. I'll make it real simple for those of us who are not theologically trained and who are not biblically familiar. Living sacrifices, meaning that you no longer live for yourself, you live for him. That means your way of doing things is going to be painful as you try to get rid of them. Because you are comfortable with living the way that you have been living. And in fact, you're so comfortable. And one of the reasons why you're comfortable, because you were you was not taught that you have been living wrong. After all, think about it. When you talk about righteousness and unrighteousness, there are far more people in the earth that is unrighteous. Then there are people that are righteous. Are y'all looking at me deep? There's far more people that are having sex with people that they're not married to than there are people who are 
Hold on, you're looking at me real crazy. There are four more people who say that they love God and still have side chicks than there are people who don't say they love God. I would rather you not tell me that you love God and don't have a side piece than tell me that you love God and have a side in other words, there are far more people doing wrong than there are doing right. So guess what? We are raised in habitats and environments of wrongdoing. Wrongdoing seems like the right thing so that when people talk to us about the right thing, we then discern or come to comprehend or come to understand that they're talking to us about the wrong thing. And if we do understand that they're talking to us about the right thing although we're doing the wrong thing we have a tendency to get indignant and say don't you judge me well I ain't trying to judge you talk like my pastor would talk I'm not trying to judge you if I call the red wagon red is not the wagon red did I judge you or did I just make a statement concerning of concerning what I observed I didn't judge you I just said that this is how you live and the way that you live is wrong. But because we're not used to that, we get uncomfortable. And here is the reality, and this is what I want the body of Christ to embrace. If you are a living sacrifice, and I am a living sacrifice, and we're trying to live the biblical life, we cannot be ashamed. We have to boldly state the heart of God in a loving way. And watch this. Be okay with people being uncomfortable around you. Be okay with that. Be un they could be uncomfortable. You just continue to be loving. And as you're loving them, although they are uncomfortable, they're going to say, man, I'm, I'm so uncomfortable when I'm around her, but she loves me so much I can't help but be with her. I can't help but be around her because he treat me, he, I, he, he honor me, he, he care for me. There's compassion. He's truly concerned about what's going on in my life. I know that my way of living is contrary to his way of living. And I know now that he is trying to help me understand. She is trying to help me understand. I want to get you closer to God. I know that that's their intent, but it, it just makes me so uncomfortable. But I can't get away because the love is so attractional. See, the body of Christ has been called by God to live out his image in the earth. We have to be bold enough to be the difference because if we don't be the difference, well, the majority is going to win. Majority is going to win. And, 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 and I, I want to live in such a way. I want people to look at my life in such a way to where they look at my life and see the difference. But not only do they see the difference, they see the power that comes with the difference. They see the joy that comes with the difference. They see the peace that comes with the difference. I was, I was at the bowling alley last night and, and it just seemed like everywhere I went, I, I, I was, I kept being bombarded by the, the uh, aroma of, 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 of the weed. <laughs> <laughs> I could I, if I went to the left there was the weed if I went to the right there was the weed so all of a sudden all this started burning up in the throat area and, and I would now I said I would never smoke crack cocaine I used to get high on weed I, I didn't know I had, I, it, it's been so long that it's, it, it was no longer a sweet smelling savor. <laughs> the aroma was no longer pleasing. So I so I, I just said it loud around some people. I didn't ex, ex, think nobody was listening to me. I said, man, who is smoking weed? You, could you not come in here right after? You got, it's like, it's like I was smelling Vic's Ave. All it was all up. it was start it was but I thought it was by the time I got home my head was hurting I was I, but I thought it was my allergies it was the weed up in the throat area and in the nostrils my head was throbbing 
And I said, Lord, we need the difference to be present. But, but we need the difference to be present to have these gifts. Read with me, please, in verse 3 in Romans 12. Because of the grace that God gave me, I can say to each one of you, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. See, when we are the difference, we're not going into the place to make people think. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I don't want you to think that I think I'm better than you. Because I don't think that I'm better than you. I just think that I'm different. And, and my difference is really what you want. You just don't know it. No, you, you really want to be in a place of real peace. You want to be in a place where you can enjoy life without being high and drunk. You do. Trust, trust me, you do. I've, I've been on both sides. Trust me. I've lived it. I've lived it deeply. I've lived it. You, I'm telling you the type of peace that I have, the type of joy that I have, the power of God that we have as believers in Christ Jesus, having access to him, intimately involved. I, now, now, this is where the old church would say words can't explain. I can't explain it. That's why I'm trying to do everything to invoke you to come over here and live it. And the more you live it, the more full you get, the more joy you get, the more I'm telling you, because I, 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 I've had I've had the understanding that if you try to straddle the fence, it's just not the same. It's not you missing. You miss some stuff. So I don't. So even in the body of Christ, even in this church, I, as we grow and as we mature, and God start bringing in more unbelievers and more immature believers, we don't want them to think that we're walking around saying we're better than. No, I no no. Uh -uh. I, I I was I was at a, at my man's house and he was listening to old hip hop. I was a hip, I was a hip hop head. And, and a lot of the old hip hop artists that I grew up with, they're starting to make music again because they hate what's happening in the hip hop world. It's trash. But they don't want the generation to come to be exposed to trash and don't know the good stuff. And so he was listening to it. Now he know that I was really big into hip hop. So he was jamming and he was like, Dre, listen to this right here. Listen to this right here. And he was jamming it. Well, I, I don't want him to think I'm that holy that I that I can't just. <laughs> so you know why why you know it was a song he, he was like who you think better Meth man who, who the best in Wu Tang I was like Meth he's like nah Raekwon I was like nah nah put something on right now I'm gonna show you ball for ball Raekwon can't see now I like Raekwon but Raekwon can't see Meth and we just jamming I'm just. <laughs> So I said, man, so I said, bro, let me get out of here because I might tell you, bring me the pad and pen. I might write me some stuff down. We go in the back because he got a little studio on his back. We go in the back. I draw, I, I spit something. I, I ain't spit in about 30 years, but I spit something tonight because he got me crunk. I was crunk. Well, well, see, watch this, guys. That's, that's Gospel Avenue. When you can be there with people. And you can say, well, I, no, I, yeah, I'm, I've changed and I'm different, but I, I get it. I see where you are. We can vibe out just for a moment. If that's going to get you to look at me and say, well, yeah, he loved God and we have different belief systems and we have different philosophies. But I can see that there's something on him that's not on me. There's something in him that's not in me. I just want to get to know the God that he knows. Somebody say living sacrifices. So now watch this. Watch, watch this. This is what Kevin was talking about. Uh, Romans 12 verse 4. We have many parts in one body. But the parts don't have all the same function. Uh, uh, like I said, I was feeling real bad. And, and this is how we want the body of Christ. I was talking to Seiko about this. We want the body of Christ. We want this local church so well equipped. Uh, like Maya had to do worship. This morning by herself. We want the body of Christ so well equipped that even when we have people that are not feeling well, we have the gifts functioning in the body to make sure that there is no parts missing. So 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 if the if the if the, if the ganja 
would have had me in the gutter and I couldn't get up this morning. I need to be able to make a phone call, Chris. Chris, come preach for me. Chris said, do what? <laughs> do what? Yeah, come preach for me, Chris. Preach for you? Yeah, yeah, we've been training you. We've been discipling you. We've been spending time with you. The word of God in your belly. I'm going to tell the house church shepherds you're going to come preach. I haven't prepared. Now, yeah, yeah, you, you, you didn't know you was prepared. Oh, go, go, go to the slide. You go, go to the slide. You, you didn't, you didn't know. Go, go to the next one. Go, go, go to the next one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Prepare my, prepare myself for service. See, see, we got to prepare ourselves to serve God. And what the evil one want us to do, the evil one want us to get us trapped in a world that is contrary to the word of God, to the word of God, so that God can't use us. He can't use us because we're not prepared for service. But when we are in the body of Christ and we are with each other and we are teaching each other, we are training each other. Our intent is to teach us to live a life that's contrary to the way that we've been taught to live. Amen. Go back. Go back. Look at this. How do I change? I have to first look at the world in which I'm living and understand that their way is contrary to the word of God. I cannot be afraid to take a negative stance against what is positively embraced by everybody. It's OK. I was talking to a guy with bowling and, and, and somehow, some way, a conversation came up about homosexuality. And he was like, man, you know, I, I don't really care. You know, people live how they want to live. I said, good, good. And I stopped talking about it because I know the conversation could get a little. And he kept going. Now, I've, I'm looking this way at lane three and four. I'm not looking at you. I'm trying to not engage. And he kept going. Then he made it worse because someone who is of the alternative lifestyle came and stayed right next to us. And he's going on and on. And I said, well, here's the thing. I get it. Some of your closest friends are in the alternative lifestyle. I get it. And you deem them as good people, and they probably are. But here is the problem. You did not create yourself. I did not create myself. This young man did not create himself. You didn't create the stars. You didn't create the trees. You didn't create the water in the sea. You have no authority to say what is and what isn't. Now, according to my paradigm, the creator says the alternative lifestyle is contrary to the way that he intend for humanity to live in the earth. We don't have to like it, but he has ultimate say so. We don't. Now, you may not believe as I believe, and that's okay. But I'm saying to you that I could never just be okay and say people can live how they want to live because then I'll be arguing against the God that created me that have all say so. He says that the alternative lifestyle is contrary to his will. Men are supposed to be with women. Women are supposed to be with men. That's God's will. You don't have to like it. I don't have to like it, but it is what it is. Everybody got quiet. Everybody looking at me. And God said, stand. Amen. See, because you have to stand. You don't have to be mean about it. You don't have to be nasty about it. You just have to stand. Now, I still love you. And the young man that came and stood beside us, I still speak. In fact, he makes sure because I can walk by 12 times and all of a sudden he's going to say, Oz, what's going on? Hey, man, you good? We good, baby. And I keep it moving. I don't, I'm not mean. I'm not nasty. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to be the light. Can we be the light? Now watch this. So those of you, especially preachers, because church preachers get on my nerve. Uh, for those of you who think that that's your bent on the alternative lifestyle, no. I am standing on everything that's contrary to the word of God. 
So if I'm talking to a man, just a man that's not married, Sheila walked by. He assumes Sheila is fine. He looks at me and say, ah, no. <laughs> no, no. My woo is at the house. Mars is at the house. Now, question for you. Or do you just want to woo or do you want to marry her? Well, you just want to woo, that's contrary to God's will. Because she's not your wife. So why are you looking at her lusting? See, it's not just about my axe to grind. I have no axe to grind. It's about the word of God. Somebody say living sacrifices. Stand on the word of God so that the world in which we live, somebody don't believe me, but I promise you the world in which we live will get a whole lot better. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi said he wished everybody was Christians. Now, this is a Hindu. He said he wished everybody was Christians. He wished Christians would live like the Christ they say they follow. And they asked him why. He said because the world would be better. The whole world would be better. So he says as a Hindu, I follow Jesus. I follow his ways of living. I follow his practical ways of living. I don't believe that he's God, but the way that he lived when he was on earth, if I could just live like him, I will have a better life. That's coming from a Hindu. We as believers in Christ Jesus don't believe that. I'm going to tell you how we don't believe it, because we compromise when we should stand on the word of God. So I, we, we need preachers and teachers and disciples that want to stand on the word of God, that will not fake, that will not shake, that will not be moved so that this local body can be equipped with men and women that God can use to change the world. So say with me, I got to divorce my carnal thinking. Remember what Whitmer said, the key to this change in the mind which is the control center of one's attitudes, your mind, your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions, as one's mind keeps on being made new by the spiritual input of God's word, prayer, and Christian fellowship, his lifestyle keeps on being transformed. If I just get around the right people and start doing the right thing, and I'm trying, I promise you, I'm trying to convince you with every fiber in my being I think when uh, Amaya tell you, Amaya hit me, I don't know, it's been a month or so, two months ago. She felt like God was leading her to start playing the guitar and worshiping. And she'll tell you, don't tell me that. I see that grace. I see that calling. I'm going to give you everything that I can. Everything that I come across, I'm going to give it to you to make sure that you are equipped. So she get about 12 videos from me related to singing and playing the guitar every day. I know she'd be like, well, Lord, another one? Sometimes they six back to back. Because I, I want to see you become. Lil' Cam hit me. I'm, I'm discipling my group. What you need? You discipling some young men on college campus? Well, I know the devil trying to get people to live alternative lifestyles. Not just homosexuality, but promiscuity. Becoming drug addicts, you know how people, how many people go to college and become addicted to drugs, become alcoholics. You doing that on the college campus? Oh, what you need from me? Whatever I got, you can have it. Anybody that's ready to go to work for the Lord God, you have my absolute attention. Now, if you want to be playing around, I, I call somebody else. I, I just don't have time. If you're unbelieving. I have all the time in the world. If you're immature, I have all the time in the world. If you're ready to work, I have all the time in the world. If you're carnal, I have no time. All you get is a rebuking. <laughs> yeah. You're, 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 you're immature, you're childish, get up out of my face. You get a rebuke. That's all you get. But anybody that want to love God or anybody who don't know God or anybody who wants to grow in God, man, I have all the time in the world. Who is with me that, that have all the time in the world for those kinds of people? All the time in the world. 
the people playing around, we don't got time for that. If my mind is carnal, then I will rationalize my daily actions, attitudes, and behavior towards people. Thus, my service in the body of Christ will be invaded with carnal thoughts. What, uh, what is carnal thoughts? I'll give it to you so that, so that you can understand. Carnal people are simply these kinds of people. People who act like they love God, they don't love God. And if you look into their lives, you will see that they do everything that they're supposed to do that is not everything that they're supposed to do to show that they're carnality. And they don't do any things that they're supposed to do to show their spirituality. They fake us. That's what they are. They hit you with the pump fake all day long. They pretend us. Just live with them. Just walk with them closely. They carnal. Or they find themselves under distress. And everything that is contrary to the word of God going to manifest. They carnal. Just put them in the right situation. At the right time. And they'll show you that they're not lovers of God. They carnal. Their intentions, their desires, the things that they pursue in life is carnal. You can never ask them to live sacrificially. They never will. Everything will always be about them. If they want to serve in the body of Christ, it's for their own glory. It's not for the glory of God. They just want people to look at them and think that they are important. Wow. <laughs> just carnal. <laughs> uh, I was listening to a pastor. I don't really listen to him, but I, the clip came and he said, he, I guess he was frustrated. He said, I am tired of all of you reaching out to me saying you want to be on the praise team. You're getting on my nerves. Well, I guess he discerned that they want to be on the praise team because they want to be up there so that people can see that they got. I don't know because I don't know the history. I don't know what. But but I would think for him to do a public rebuke like that, they, you know, some folks just want to get up here and act like they something that they not. Then one preacher said, just because you can shout hallelujah loud don't mean you're a preacher. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on, <laughs> what's happening around here. But, but, but here is the thing. We are not in this so that we can be famous. We're not in this so that we can be seen. We're not in this so that we can get rich. We're in this so that we can serve the Lord God. So that people who are far from God can be drawn near to him. That's why we in this. We in this because we love them. Yeah. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Can you live sacrificially? Do you love me? Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Do what I'm asking you to do. He asked Peter so many times. Peter said, okay, I, listen. You know my heart better than I know my heart. Well, Peter was dealing with being self-driven, self-serving. Selfish. He didn't want to love God and do what God was calling him to do because he loved God. He wanted everything to be about Peter. Now, Paul sets us up big time because he says, live a holy, acceptable life. For God. Sacrifice everything for him. He sets us up big time because in him asking. The church in Rome to join him in living this sacrificial life. He sets he sets the whole church up. I can see it. If it was today, everybody shouting, everybody screaming, I'm ready to live a sacrificial life. And Crystal, he turns around and tell them how to do it. See, we never heard it preached like this. We've heard Romans 12 preached a lot. We never heard it preached like this. He tells them how to do it. Now, I appreciate Paul for this because I hate for people to ask me to do something and assume that I know how to do it. I, I, I don't like 
I don't like for people to do that. I don't like that. That, that has been, especially here as I'm writing my dissertation, has become my pet peeve now. Because you're going to ask me to do something that I, I you going to ask me to write a dissertation. I ain't never wrote no, I never wrote no dissertation before. How you going to ask me to do something that I've never done and then expect? And, and, and here's the problem with it. You not only expect for me to do it, but you expect for me to do it well. And then got the mitigated goals when critiquing me to critique me like I should know better. Now, the church does that a lot. Tell people, be holy for the Lord God is holy. And, huh? Well, how do I do that? All right. I get it. I'm at the place now where I want to be faithful. You know, and here it is. A husband has come to himself. He want to be faithful to his wife. And all he gets is Exodus 20. Do not commit adultery. OK, tell me how, because I know that if I don't do it right, you're going to penalize me. You're going to punish me for it. You're going to criticize me. You're going to ridicule me. Tell me how. Well, Paul doesn't just ask for the church in Rome to be living sacrifices. He started listing out things to give you indicators as to what a living sacrifice is supposed to do. Uh, uh, I call it the marks. Let's go to it. This is where we close. The next one. The marks. Let's get down to it. Romans 12. Let's jump down to verse 9. Somebody say the marks. This, this is the marks of living a sacrificial life. How do I live sacrificially? First and foremost. And I and, and look, it's a long list. I, I only I just highlighted. See, see, be ye holy, for the Lord God is holy. Uh, 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 go back to, to, to verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Paul, how? Uh, first things first, let love be genuine. Don't just be telling people you love them and you're not willing to go to, go to the extent to show them that it's real. Let love be genuine. Uh, verse 9b, a bore or hate what is evil. So once you're taught what is evil, you have to have a disdain, although your flesh may long for it. Although you may feel like it's going to satisfy you. Although you may feel like that's an itch that needs to be scratched. God says it's evil. You have to hate it. And the only way you can hate a thing is that you literally starve yourself of it. A smell I once loved. I hate it when I was smelling it yesterday. A smell that, that, that used to excite me. Offended me. A smell that used to satisfy me. You uh, who got the wood? <laughs> who, who got the who got the wood? Now, now, uh, I ain't gonna go there. 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 But who got the wood? <laughs> I, somebody got the wood and you got to share. Watch this. One thing the world got right. Share. Shatter, shatter alcohol. I ain't never seen nobody get one shot. If a group around is 12 of them on the train. <laughs> got the share. <laughs> that part ain't selfish. That part ain't self-driven. You, you, smoke it. Told Craig, now you ain't going to work today. We got to get high. We got to get, because Smokey wasn't finna sit on the porch all day and get high by himself. 
he got the shaft. Well, well, to the point now to where we, we, we as born again believers, we share the love of God. We hate evil. Let one another, watch, watch Paul comes back, verse 10. Hey, let one another with brotherly affection. Love one another with brotherly affection. Watch, outdo one another in showing honor. Come on. Outdo one another in showing honor. Be patient in tribulation. Oh, that's real right there. When you're going through hell, be patient. God, when you're going to do it, I need you to do it now. God said, no, no. Now was Wednesday. Sunday, be patient. <laughs> See, you got to know the God you serve. Sometimes God will say, oh, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to fix it. And then other times he say, nah, we're going to let this sit for a while. Well, why? Why? Uh, why? Are you you messing my head up. Why are you willing to do it now? At one point, and now you're saying, I gotta wait. Yeah, all of it is character development. Uh, 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 I, I do it now because I want you to know that I'm God. I want you to see how good I am. I want to show you that I can make a way out of no way. I'm doing it now because I want you to know that you can call on me in a time of trouble and I answer. Now I'm telling you to wait because I want you to believe me. See, I want you to know that I'm the same God that told you now as I'm telling you to wait. Because if I did it for you then when you called upon me, can you wait now and still believe me until I do it. Yeah. I don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until I do it. Can you wait now? See, I came when you call. It's just like parenting. Yeah, as I want you to mature, you scream, yeah, holler, and I'm going to give you the bottle as fast as I can. But when you turn about two on. and you start crying and hollering, wait. You can wait. The rice is almost done. You can wait. That's good. Because I'm, I'm helping you grow up. Yeah. I'm helping you grow up. Good parent. No, I'll, I'll fix your brakes the last time. This time, you're going to fix your own brakes. Good parenting. Yeah. Now, I don't know what that means. Because I always fix my own stuff. So I ain't had no mama and dad to do. But, but I'm just saying, you know, it, some, of us, some of us. Some of us, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have that kind of money growing up, Big T. Yeah. Oh, there's some folks up in here. I ain't gonna call nobody out. I ain't trying, you know, yeah, some, some folks had some good stuff growing up. Me, I had to put my, my can in my bicycle tire, <laughs> pedal my stuff, and while I'm pedaling my stuff, <laughs> <laughs> act like I had a dirt bike. Act like it. You know what I'm saying? It used to call myself. This is my Kawasaki 80. I, I act like I had some stuff. Act like I had me and my brothers. We act like we had some stuff. Imagination is powerful when you're dealing with a lack of provision. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I had the best BMX on it. The only thing I'm hitting it too. I'm hitting it. I'm, I'm popping my clutch and everything. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm hitting it. You, get, you have to do some stuff. And watch this. And it's good to be in a place where both is present. Where there's provision and then sometimes there's a little lack so that you can have some character. Yeah. I, I, the best people I know are people that probably had a lot of provision growing up but then there's some times in their life when they had some lack and they now they now they're able to talk to you with some balance. Yeah, Paul says, I know what it means to have, and I know what it means to not have nothing. I've learned how to be content in it all. Oh, can I have some help? Be constant in prayer. It's funny how Paul put be patient in tribulation, 
together with being constant in prayer. Because when you're going through is when you need to pray the most. Or let's put it like this. Pray now a whole lot so that when you're going through, you can have some substance. Be, watch this. Uh, now, this way everybody finna get mad. I told y'all he, he set the whole church up. Bless those who persecute you. Those who do you bad. Those who talk bad about you. Bless them. Huh? <laughs> nah, we don't roll like that. Do me wrong. I got something for you. Oh, but he goes deep because he wants you to really understand how intentional God is. Bless and do not curse them. Now that's now. I don't know how I'm not going to curse them when I'm mad at them when I curse for fun. But now y'all not here. See all I know. That, that's what I do. I, I, uh, uh, an expert. Yeah, I, I used to be a cursing linguist. Yeah, yeah. Put them together the right way at the right time. Oh, love it. Used to love profanity. I was raised in a house that's that was all we, it was it was a word and a word. A word and a word. It actually, yeah, yeah. First word. My mama told me when she took me to school the first time, I cursed her out. All, all the, the words. So you're going to leave me at this MF school and you this and that. I cursed out. Well, I didn't know I was cursing out. That's just how we talked around the crib. I curse now. My kids might call the Lord on me. <laughs> <laughs> my kids don't know nothing about no. The only profanity they hear is probably when they go to school. They don't hear no profanity in the crib. They will look at me weird. Let me curse Nadia. Talit Little, he might be starting trying to find something. Now, I can't whoop him. He, I, I can't whoop him because he's bigger than me, but let him curse my mama again. I got something for him. <laughs> well, well, Paul says you can be mad because they're persecuting you. Don't curse them. Bless them. Live in harmony with one another. How do I do that? Because I'm not wise in my own eyesight. See, you can't live in harmony when you think you're smarter than everybody. <laughs> can't nobody tell you nothing. Because you already know. Stop looking at me, Christina. Christina be looking at me like, well, you think you know everything, especially when it comes to bowling. You want to tell everybody what to do. I just be trying to help. <laughs> I just be trying to help. Bless those who persecute you. Do not curse them. Live in harmony with one another. Never be wise in your own eyesight. He comes back to it because he wants us to really understand that how you treat people really determine your love relationship with God. Repay no one evil for evil. If possible. Now you may be saying, see, there you go. There go my loophole. He said, if possible. No, no, that ain't what he mean. Why? If possible, so far as it depends on you. Live peacefully with all as it depends on you. In other words, you determine if you're going to live peaceful with all people. They don't determine that for you. So you can have somebody that, de that is determined not to live peacefully with you. You say to them, but I want to live peacefully with you. But if you don't want a relationship, that's fine. But I'm going on in peace. Don't hold. I, 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 I talk to people that hold grudges. They hold stuff in their heart. And they justify it because they're either one or two things. They're either unbelieving or they carnal. As soon as, and this is the Lord Jesus, be not easily offended. As soon as someone offend you, you should be running to the altar of your heart to get rid of it. To get rid of it. Let a fence slide off your back like the water slides off the back of a duck. 
Get rid of it. Don't hold on to it. Don't let it sit in your heart because as you let it sit in your heart, the evil one is going to entice you every day to hate that person, to despise that person. My boy was talking to me. He said, here's some things that I look for when I'm looking at a, a husband and wife. I look for admiration in the eyes of the wife. And he, he explained what he meant. And I like the illustration. He said uh, we was at one of my closest friends birthday party. Everybody chilling out. Everybody having fun. He said. And and I looked over and I watched my homeboy wife looking at him from afar. And she had admiration in her eyes. He said. And shoot, I was like, well, hold on. That's a lot of admiration right there. And I didn't want to. I didn't want her to think I was looking, so I just kind of cut out the corner of my eye to look at my wife to see how she was looking at me. <laughs> he said, and when I cut, I saw she was just staring at me, smiling. He said, oh, yeah, I got me one. I got me one. He said, and then I looked at my homeboy, my other homeboy. I looked over at his wife, and she was looking at his wife like that Negro disgusts me. <laughs> He said, and I was like, oh, my God, she doesn't even like him. He said, so my, my, my words to young men, marry somebody that admire you. Her heart is full of admiration concerning you. And then do your best to cultivate it with every fiber in your being. I told him, I said, you know what? I, I got one like that, too. I got one like that, too. And I don't like this when husband and wives do this. I don't like this. It gets under my skin. I don't like when a wife looks at another man who's married to another woman and say, oh, your husband do that. No, you got you a good man. I cannot stand that. That is so degrading. And, 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 I, and I don't like when the husband say, dang, bro, every time I come over here, your wife cooking. Oh, my wife don't ever cook. Shut up. <laughs> That's so disrespectful and degrading. What you have deemed to be a good man, he may not be doing it for you because you're not a good woman. Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever thought about it? Maybe he don't take your car to get all your change for a reason. Uh, um, maybe she don't fluff your pillows at night and put a little Hershey kiss on the pillow for a reason. Maybe you're not warranting that. Now, should it happen that way? No, because you don't do evil for evil. But it's a reason why certain things are happening. Have you thought about it? See, we don't think about it because we are self-centered and self-driven, even in the body of Christ. Repay no one evil for evil. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. The last one. And, and, and turn to your Bibles. Because we finna read the last one, but, 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 but he put some more on this. The last one. As we get to verse 19. Now, now, like I told you guys, go read this for yourself because it's a it's a it's a whole lot of stuff in here. It's a whole lot of stuff that's written in here. He talked about doing stuff for people. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. Do some stuff for some folk. You know what I'm saying? You may not have the money. You may not have the money, but watch this. Be generous and watch how God bless you. Do some stuff for some folk. And don't always be trying to examine a person's need. Well, I'm going to see who needs some stuff. No, do some stuff for some do some stuff for some people that you think already got some stuff. I, you may not even need it, but here. This, this, now, this is about how much you got to give them. 50 to 100. Here, you may not even live. Here go $50. Fill your car up. Now I got gas. That's okay. You might need it next week. Or you may need it Wednesday. Fill your car up. 
No, no, I'm, and I'm telling you, you don't see what I'm driving. I could put gas in it. Here, it'll go a hundred since you're being since you're being <laughs> hard headed. Since you're being hard headed, now take the hundred, fill your gas up, and then go get you something to eat. I don't need it. It's okay. God told me to do it. No, you mean God spoke to you to do it? No, I don't, I don't need Him to speak to me to do it. I, the, it's in the Word. It's, I, I don't need to be prophetic. I don't need to be discerning. I just need to be obedient to scripture. Now watch. Verse 19. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Now watch, deep people. Deep people going to say, well, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to repay evil for evil. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to try to avenge myself. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let the wrath of God deal with it. In fact, I'm praying that the wrath of God deal with it. I know. See, because see, that's why I told you you got to read it for yourself. Because you can't pray for the wrath of God to avenge uh, you, that that's not where your heart is you you can't do it when you're saying you are my enemy you're hungry i'm gonna feed you because see that's in here that's why i'm telling you to go read it for yourself paul sets it up so you can't be praying for payback he sets it up he gives instructions these are the marks of living a holy and sacrificial life. He sets it up. He's hungry. That's my enemy. I'm not praying, God, you said vengeance is mine. Pour out your wrath. <laughs> You're not saying that. You're saying, I know you don't like me. Let's go get a burger. I know you can't stand my guts. Let's go get a big goal. <laughs> I know you don't like me. And you and you say you you drive far too. Don't just drive around the corner. Now let me do this quick so they can get out of my house. I'm just trying to be obedient. No, no, drive far. Hey, it's, it's a spot. It's a spot, a restaurant that I wanted to try out. It's way over on the north side. Come eat with me. Uh, based upon traffic, it'll take about an hour and 30 to get there. Yeah. See, because while you doing that, while you think that God is working on them, he's really working on you. That hour and a half drive, that's for you. That's for you to make sure that you really got all of it out your heart. Then y'all sit and have a meal. And then you drive an hour and a half all the way back to the crib. And slide on $50. Say, here, go get some gas. See, 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 this is what the body of Christ is called by God to do. And if we do this, we don't need no antics. We don't have to preach lies to get people to want to place faith in Christ and to want to attend church. All we have to do is just love people the way that God says love people. Hold up. And we don't have to worry about all this foolishness that we have in the church if we would just love people the way that God says love people. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will. Repay. It is written, the Lord will pay it back. Instead of your enemy, instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. By doing this, you will be burning, you will pile burning coals of fire upon his head. Don't be defeated by evil, but defeat evil with good. That enemy or that person that you are having a problem with, they have a choice to make. They either experience the wrath of God, and the more you love them, God is piling it up. They either, they either experience the wrath of God or they repent 
and experience the love of God. And what do you want? You want for them to experience the love of God. You're loving them not so that God can pile up. I heard it preached that way. Love them so God can pile up coals of fire. His wrath will be just love them and watch God. No, 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 no. You're loving them because you want them to repent. You want them to place faith in Christ Jesus. You want reconciliation. That's why you're loving them. Guys, if we do this, if we do this, we will touch so many lives with the gospel. We have to live it. Wherever you work, wherever you play, wherever you gather, wherever you socialize, if you just live out the faith of the gospel, people watching, they're watching, but watch this. I'm going to mess your head up. They're not watching as long as you think they're watching. People are watching quickly and they're making their decision. And watch this. You will never know. They'll make their decision and say, oh, she just like the rest of them. She's just like all the other people that say that they're born again believers and don't really live it. And once they make their decision, you'll never know because they're going to keep on rotating with you as normal. Or they'll make the decision, oh, okay, yes, yeah, so she's a Christian, I'm a Christian, we live alike. And won't be able to tell the difference. We all good. We all have a relationship with God. Because they can't determine or distinguish the difference. You should be able to show them a kind of relationship with God that they've never seen before. So that there can be a contrast of comparison. Because as soon as someone else say to them, I'm a born again believer, they'll be able to look at that person and look at you and say, well, now nah, we not nah, the two ain't adding up. You look a whole lot like me. That person looks a little different. And you got to be close to them. You got to be close to them so that they can see how you handle problems, because that's where the rubber meets the road. It's when they see you go through them. It's how they see you rotate and move when you're around everybody. That's when they're able to say, OK, I see. I see. And they have to see the light of the gospel shining in your face. You can't look miserable and mad all the time, tired and exhausted, broken down, hurt. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just I'm going through. Well, Dad, you got to go through like that. If you got if, if you with the Lord and you go through like that, I'm, I'm pretty good on, on the side I'm on already because I go through better than you. Someone say with me, the marks of living a holy, sacrificial life. Give God a hand clap of praise.